My name is Brent Hawks, and I have a title that I'm very, very proud of, very proud of. I am the Pastor Emeritus of Metropolitan Community Church of Toronto. And I need your prayers this morning because apparently I am a little bit hyper this morning, and um, I feel very impish. And so I need for you to pray that I will stick to my script because they say that when a senior pastor invites one of the previous pastors, especially when they're an older guy, they pray that they won't say anything inappropriate, that they will behave themselves. Dina started praying the minute I arrived this morning. Uh, so on August the 14th, 1977, I became the senior pastor of this church and I walked into my office and on the wall, the previous pastor had left four framed prints of the face of Jesus. One face was labeled the compassionate Jesus. It looked very kind and very caring. And Jesus lived that by caring for the sick, by, attack, by caring for those who were being attacked by the religious morality squad, and by caring for the masses, as he said they were sheep without a shepherd. The second framed print said the sad Jesus. And we saw that Jesus lived that when Lazarus died, a friend of his, and Jesus wept. The third print was the angry Jesus. And this was the Jesus who fought injustice, the Jesus who felt that religious discrimination, that religious extremism need to be challenged. And he turned over the tables and he called people snakes and vipers. Now, Dina hasn't gone quite that far yet, <laughs> but you saw that video and she was getting closer. And so whenever you hear Dina calling some politician who will remain nameless, a snake or a viper know that she's just quoting Jesus, okay? <laughs> That's all she's doing. She's just quoting Jesus. And the fourth print was the laughing Jesus. Now, we have no references that I could find of Jesus actually laughing, but we know he had friends. We know he loved to party. He know, we know that he didn't want them to run out of wine <laughs> when they were partying. Now, I, there's a rumor that I wanted to add a fifth print of the face of Jesus, taking a picture of myself, <laughs> and there is no truth to that rumor, none whatsoever. The fact that I had a print of myself framed in exactly the same frame had nothing to do with the, the other faces of Jesus. But I began to do a little bit of a survey because when visitors would come into my office and they'd see those four prints, they were always attracted to them. And so I started the survey and I said, which one surprises you the most? And almost always they said, the laughing Jesus. They'd never thought about Jesus laughing and having fun. Can you imagine Jesus living his whole life without laughing with his friends? about laughing at himself, I think that God did not stop speaking at the end of the book of Revelation. And I think a picture of the laughing Jesus is another time of God speaking to us about the need to have some fun along the way. And, but when I asked people which of those four prints was the most disturbing print, they always said the angry Jesus. Now, as a kid, I was constantly told, now Brent, don't get angry. I was told that by my parents, and I was told that consistently by my Baptist church. And yet the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Be angry, but sin not. Jesus was certainly angry. So here we are on Palm Sunday, and Jesus is entering Jerusalem, and the compassionate Jesus, the sad Jesus, the angry Jesus, and the laughing Jesus is entering into Jerusalem. Now, those of us who have decided to follow Jesus, we are called to be like Jesus. 
We are called to be compassionate, to not turn away when someone is in the midst of difficulty or hurting or painful. We are called to be the sad Jesus. When people experience losses in their lives, to be there with them. And we are called to be the angry Jesus, to be angry at injustice, to be angry at religious-based discrimination, particularly religious-based homophobia and religious-based transphobia. And we are called to be the laughing Jesus, to enjoy the journey. Yes, it is hard work, it, and sometimes we will be very angry and very discouraged, but at the same time, we need to be able to have fun together along the way. We as a faith community here at MCC Toronto are also called to follow Jesus in these ways. We are called to be compassionate and sad and angry and to have fun. Now on Palm Sunday, we're usually presented by most churches with the humble Jesus. And I'm sure Jesus was humble, but not on this day. And we missed an important part of the story because biblical historians say to us, hold on there, this is not about the humble Jesus. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, the way he did it was to send a message, a clear message to the religious leaders and the political leaders. This was a political act. The belief in those days was that though the person who was going to come to deliver the Jews from the oppression of the Romans, that that person would arrive entering the eastern gate riding on a donkey, which is exactly what Jesus did. And when the crowd were calling out, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, they were calling for a political revolution, overthrow the oppressors, set us free. Now, just in case someone didn't get the message that Jesus was coming to deliver, he then went to the temple and turned over the tables. Religious leaders, political leaders got the message and they started to collude to how they were going to kill him. How are we going to follow this Jesus as individuals and as a church? How will we follow the compassionate Jesus? We do that by caring for those in need. That's part of it. Archbishop, an Archbishop of Brazil, Dom Holder Camara said this, why is it that when I feed the poor, they call me a saint? But when I ask why there are poor, they call me a communist. Feed the poor, yes. But also ask the questions about why poverty exists in a society as wealthy as ours. If we are to be compassionate, we need to do both. Now, I'm going to push you a little bit. Years ago, many, many years ago, when the Out in the Cold program was first expanding in Toronto, that's a program where churches open their facilities up uh, at nighttime in the cold of winter particularly, for people who have no place to stay. And MCC Toronto was approached. And friends of mine at the Toronto Social Planning Council, a pretty left-wing organization in those days, said to me, Brent, please don't have MCC Toronto become part of the Out in the Cold program. Because they said, if you do that, governments will close down shelters and let churches do that work. And then housing becomes an act of charity instead of an act of justice. Now, we need to do both. We need to provide housing, and we need to challenge the system that lets housing be a crisis for so many. Doing both. How will we follow the sad Jesus? We will comfort those who mourn, those who've lost family members or friends or pets, those who've lost their dreams, those who've lost hope, lost relationships. 
For those of you who are relatively new to Canada, we recognize that many of you have left friends behind. Someone, some of you have left your partners behind to be here. In the midst of your sadness, please know that MCC Toronto wants to be able to be here to care for you, to support you, to help you, to mourn loss with you. And I believe Jesus would be sad by how we are treating the environment, this amazing gift, this amazing planet that God has given to us. How will we follow the laughing Jesus? Take a break. Get over those little things that irritate you. Have some fun together. I tried to find the, uh, the, the woman who said this quote, and I couldn't find it, but if I can't dance, I don't want to be in your revolution. Thank you. <laughs> How are we going to follow the angry Jesus? Whenever fundamentalists collude with public figures, it never turns out very good. And I happened to notice this morning when I came in that there were some flags removed from the sanctuary. Thank you, whoever made that decision. I was never comfortable with them being here. I know there's a time for it when we want to win a big victory and something amazing happens because Canada finally did the right thing, bring them in and take them back out again. The Christian church has a terrible, terrible history of colluding with government, of denying other religions the opportunity to exist, of participating in blessing crusades, of being part of the whole movement of empire, conquering countries, taking over countries. We criticize Russia today, but we celebrate in our history books what other countries did centuries and decades ago of conquering, of being part of empire. The Christian church has a terrible record when it comes to human rights. And in Rainbow Faith and Freedom, my charity, we say that a religious attack requires a religious response. That we want freedom of religion and freedom from religion. And today we see that same thing happening with the religious attack on trans rights. Surely, as a minimum, the church should be standing up for the right of trans people to be able to have a job to be able to get proper health care, to be able to live a life without the threat of death. How will we follow Jesus, the compassionate Jesus, the angry Jesus, the sad Jesus, the laughing Jesus? MCC Toronto, this is a sacred place. This is a holy place. This is holy ground upon which we sit, holy ground upon which we walk when we walk in those doors. Every single Sunday, every single day during the week, this is holy ground. And it is holy space because we've been trying to follow Jesus. It's holy space. And we follow the compassionate Jesus by every single Sunday. Dina and June and JJ and others stand here and say, all are welcome. That's holy. Do you know how unusual that is? In my Baptist church, when we had communion once a quarter, the deacons would get up and say, all of you who've been approved by the deacons to receive communion in this church can stay. The rest of you, could you please leave and wait for your friends outside? This is holy ground because we follow the sad Jesus. Because in this space, we bury the people we love. And we welcome anyone else who wants to bury the person they love to come here. Member of a church or not a member of a church. We are the angry Jesus. Fighting injustice. 
And we are the laughing Jesus. We have fun along the way. We laugh at ourselves more often than not. So I want you this morning to hear the voices of all of the people who are saying, thank you for following Jesus, MCC Toronto. Thank you for being compassionate and angry and sad and laughing. All of those people who have come to this church when they needed us, some of you who stayed, and some who've moved on, but they got what they needed. I want you to hear those voices saying thank you. But more importantly, I want you to hear the voices who haven't found us yet, who don't know yet that it's safe. I want you to hear those voices. And to those of you online, please reach out to others through your social network and let them know that they can come and worship with us in this format. And I know that some of you are sitting in front of your computers right now crying because you're experiencing something you've never experienced before. One of the most authentic expressions of Christianity is MCC Toronto. So let us follow this Jesus into Holy Week. The first part of the week, you're going to see the compassionate Jesus and the sad Jesus and the angry Jesus. But hang on until Easter Sunday as we laugh together that God decided that the political leaders and the religious leaders were not going to have the final say. And God raised Jesus from the dead. Follow Jesus into Holy Week. Follow this Jesus into the next chapter of your life. Happy Palm Sunday. Amen.